Okay. Well, what's the intro? Wait, wait, what? The way to the show, check it out. Wise Guys episode, another one. What are we talking about today? Master Ogwe, right? And, Master uh, Ogwe. Master yes. Shifu. Yeah, Kung Fu Panda lore, man. Kung Fu Panda. Man. Kung Fu yeah. Panda. Yeah. Addiction. Yeah. By meditation. meditation. Mm-hmm. Addiction. Get problematic gaming and I think, yeah, anxiety. Do you think it was anxiety. a great episode? Yes. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Look at that. Episode 307 of H of the Show. Traveling around the world. And now we got a guy in Canada, a guy in Saudi, a guy in LA. International. Love. Mr. Worldwide. Like Mr. The number one always. most international <laughs> podcast. <laughs> the number one most diverse, most international, most small podcast. From okay. coast to coast, nice. man. North America to the other side of North America. Wow. Amazing. How's it going, bros? <laughs> Pretty good, Not pretty bad, good. Sharif, what are you drinking? Because I'm drinking something as well. I want to see if we're within the same ballpark. Tea. Tea, ah, oh, yes, tea. What kind? <laughs> Raspberry tea. Oof, close. And a lemon and hibiscus. Hibis? Lemon and hibiscus, <laughs> nice. Uh, they're going very citrusy. You like them citrusy. Uh, I like them sweet. Not usually, bro. Usually, the thing I drink... Uh, who are, no, right now, I'm drinking teas without caffeine because I want to stay away from caffeine. Same, actually. Uh, caffeine yeah. gives me anxiety uh, again. Well, everything gives people anxiety at this point. <laughs> everything gives <laughs> everyone anxiety at this point. <laughs> oh, <God>. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I usually drink, if you want something that's good for anxiety, chamomile <laughs> and vanilla and honey, a free mix. It's pretty good. Yeah, I heard of that. Yeah, thank you, actually. Yeah, yeah. Twinnings, it's pretty nice. And yoga. I have it before. You're so then. British, man. Twinnings. He supports the queen, man. You know, on, on Twinnings. <laughs> well, actually, actually, you'd be surprised how many, like, how many Brits hate Twinnings. Really? Okay. It's <laughs> yeah, more because popular it's worldwide like, then. Yeah, it's because because it's like the what do you call it? What's the word for it? It's like the fast food of tea. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like hacky father, you know. It's not yeah, like yeah. man, no, it's not refined tea. So the people that are really into tea in the UK, they go to like tea tea, tea stores. And they're really nice. You go in and like you can see all the herbs. They have them like it's fresh and shit. Yeah. I don't know if they're called the herbs, but I guess it is. Because you see them where you they make mixes for you, custom mixes. They already have like a ton of custom mixes in them. So most of the time you don't even need to do that. Sometimes yeah. you can even sit to you you can try them and drink them out at the store before buying them. Which I think is really cool. One day, honestly, I'd love to have a shop like that. Not necessarily like just for tea, but it's like a small cafe where you can like, sell uh, those goodies, man. That would be nice. Nice relaxing vibes, man. Yeah, like yeah. 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 Too too bad, like yeah, I mean, it's unless you're very lucky, it's not like the most profitable business. Though. Like <laughs> unless you're lucky in terms of position, in terms of like yeah, any. Mean, just man. people liking the vibe right all right not too many people i mean not too many businesses are like profitable nowadays to be honest though <laughs> unfortunately honestly it's easier COVID. Yes, yeah in covid COVID. everything is bad in terms of eating i think that's like I, I there's a there's a store near my house it's like it's such a cool idea it's like a cat cafe it's like you it's like coffee mm. tea bakery pastries and there's just cats yeah. everywhere cats. Right? you eat the yeah. cats you no, 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 we don't endorse that behavior. Yet. <laughs> Maybe my friend Ming Ying can, can, can uh, tell you that uh, something else. Uh, hey, 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 let's not be no, it doesn't Chinese, exist, man. <laughs> exactly. No, no, I know. But yeah, like, there's cats everywhere, man. Just like hopping on the tables, just from where you pay, like just everything with the chefs. It's really cool. And it's yeah. very busy. You never know what works until you try it. Yeah, I, I went to a cat cafe once and the way it works is you pay by the hour and you get like free drinks and stuff. So it's kind of cool. It's a cool nice. concept. Yeah. Instead of paying like for what you drink, you pay by the hour and you hang out with a bunch of cats. So people sometimes go there to read. Right? Because like, this is an interesting thing, right? Because like petting reduces anxiety. It makes people feel better. It misses endorphins. So when you're playing with pets and stuff, it's pretty good for you. So Not only that, man. Purring, the purring of cats is at a frequency that re- re- relaxes muscle tension. Uh, I love, I love, I'm addicted of anything to petting my cats when I have cats before. It's so nice. I don't know if this is going to I'm surprised you don't have a cat yet. But not me. Because my landlord uh, <laughs> doesn't like pets, man. It's... Oh. Why? 
Why would no, actually, I do have plenty of pets, man. What am I talking about? I have cockroaches in the, in the cabinet. <laughs> I have, have these. Nice. <laughs> Mice, I have. Uh, <laughs> game, man. I have whatever you, whatever, whatever yeah. critters you can imagine. I have, man. This, I'm not a squirrel jumping through the windows. It's like, yeah, uh, I want to move into a new apartment. Hopefully, when my lease ends in October, so I can actually get a pet. Yeah, it's really important. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. I, I, what do you mean by controversial? <laughs> I um I don't know. Whenever I see animals, I'm just like that. Those are cool. I don't understand why people get, oh, that's a kind of cool, good, good, good. you know, stuff like that. I'm just like, oh, that's cool. Oh, well, nice. in Canada, everyone's like animal. that, including me. Everyone's like, <laughs> no, that. I understand, and I see it everywhere, dude, around the world. But just for me, for example, I mean, I appreciate animals. I love the wilderness. I love seeing animals. I love, like, but it's just that I don't know. It's just that I don't have that. Oh, good, 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 good. Right, instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Same, bro. But you know what? Like, I love fish. I think fish are the best pets you can have because they're just doing their own thing. You don't have to bother too much. Whereas, like, blub, blub. And I, yeah, I like cats too, man. Like, they're nice to pet. But any, many chlet, bro. I have like I'm impatient a little bit when it comes to like playing with pets, and um, so I feel like it's unfair for me to get a cat if I'm just gonna fucking neglect especially a dog. <laughs> yeah. You know, although man, cats yeah, are dog, very aloof, they don't need much care. They don't, but even for me, that's too much. (laughs) Because I'll tell you why, because I I kind of got an idea of it. Because we have now a cat now that like has decided he wants to live with us. So we have like a small uh, front yard. It's not a front yard. What do you mean he decided to live with you? Like he just like... Yeah, he just like... Infiltrated. Like he came, he decided to stay and like he would just meow for food like for five hours if you don't give it like me at Ayat. I just came after food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, so now we just feed him and he stays and and and, that, and I know because like any like we we didn't clean him and stuff like and I guess that's part of the reason why I don't play with him too much. But also, my because my nechila. That's the main reason. The main reason is I don't have the patience to sit and like play with them and whatever. Like I play with them for like five minutes and get bored. Like, I just don't have the patience for it. Like some people, they can sit with a cat and play for like an hour, bro. like thirty minutes at least. So that's the main reason I don't buy a cat. But I used to like fucking love my fish, bro, because it'd just be like doing his own thing, swimming in the bowl. I don't know. It's simple. It's nice to look at. I feel like. It's just calming to look at, and I don't. Told have me, to yeah, it used to be very peaceful that. for you in the past. Like just observing <laughs> yeah. him would be peaceful for you. What was his name? I remember. I told me his name. Yeah, fuck, can't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> Zelda, oh. maybe. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> wow. But yeah. Okay. He died when I traveled because I came back and I used those like, uh, you know, travel food for for fish. Food dispenser or what? No, it's not a food dispenser. Because I because if I wanted to get a food dispenser, I need to get a bigger bowl, and then I need to get a bigger water filter. Marshall was too too much for one cat and then one fish, so I just got uh, a snack, and it's supposed to last for fourteen days. But I came back, and well, he had eaten it, but he was also ill. So <laughs> and then like he had like swollen, he got he got a tumor or something like that, like just a. He got swollen on his right side, and then eventually, one day I woke up and he was like, flipped over like the cartoons. <laughs> Memento Mori, man. Memento Mori. Memento Mori, yeah. Memento Mori. Sharif, um, what do you do if you have a sick fish anyway? Like, you take it to the vet? What do I... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, don't, I didn't know what to do. I just thought, like, I'll clean the water, I'll try, like, and, like feed him in normally again, uh, but that didn't work out. So, How long did you I have guess, uh, him? A few months, a few months. It's a goldfish, but you know, goldfish they can live long if you take care of them. Like goldfish lifespan, let's think about. Yeah, how long do they live for? Yeah, about ten to fifteen years if you Ooh. take care of them. Yeah, wow, so, that's yeah. more than most dog breeds. Wow, wow, <laughs> fifteen years. Yeah. Man, by that point, he'll have achieved like like ancient transcendent, transcendental wisdom. Man. It's like, <laughs> just by staring at them. It's like it's a turtle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he'll 
start his own dojo and like oh my yeah. god I fucking love Kung Fu Pandas best, <laughs> I love Kung best, Fu Pandas there is so good. deep as well so many like so many little like good details, you know? what was that evil guy's name the evil tiger uh, Tai Ling Tai, tai Long Tai Long Tai Long yeah because that guy is like isn't he like the monster uh, you know what's the little mouse called Shifu he's all a Shifu. mouse no, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fox He's a, fox. He's a fox. Master Shifu. Shifu is a fox? <laughs> I'm pretty sure, man. Check it. Shifu's a fox, man. A red fox, even. Oh, shit. He is. <laughs> yes. I know my lore. Oh, he's, he's telling me <laughs> like a rat, though. Do okay. you know your lore? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Master Shifu, you know what he does with Tai Lung? Is like he, he feeds him all those, like, uh, images of, like, Grand Doris. is like, um, oh, you're going to be the best ever, best fighter ever. You're gonna take the scroll. You're gonna be the strongest guy, and so he builds this like image for him in terms of desires. And then Tai Long, you know, he reaches the that scene with the with the turtle. I don't know what the turtle. Says. Master Ugwe. Master Ugwe. Yeah, dude, you know the character so well. I love it. <laughs> so Master Ugwe, he goes like, "Oh no, you know, we're not gonna give him the scroll, you know, because he's evil," <laughs> and uh, that's. That's where he falls apart because he's like, shit, man, I wasn't only being told you know, I'm the best fighter ever. Now I'm being told I'm evil, you know, and he falls apart because of it. And it's nice because I think it points at how often we build those like desires in our head and those images. Those fantasies you know? of ourselves, yeah. Mm. And then we can, you know, you can fall into, you know, hatred as well if you're not careful when, when you don't fulfill those desires. You, you won't just have contempt for yourself, but you might have contempt for other people. So it was a very good movie. Love that message. Movie. You know, yeah, a lot yeah. of lessons, man. Actually, the reason I know Master Ugwe, you'll be surprised, uh, is because I, I frequent uh, <laughs> subreddit Who Would Win. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, man, Master Ugwe is one of the most powerful fictional characters in all of fiction. In terms of like, I knew you were gonna say that. It's still funny. <laughs> he's so powerful, man. He's so he talk, he's, he's like he, he just stomps everyone. Man. It's amazing. He's just a <laughs> shitty old turtle, but he's so strong. Yeah. Yeah. Are, the problem with who would win is that if you do put it against like someone like Goku, for example, like you're bound to eventually lose because that's what Goku does. Like, but then eventually he'll win. Like, how long true. is the time plot? How long is the how long is the fight? <laughs> that's the only factor. Is it a short fight? That's yeah, always a factor. <laughs> yeah, 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 he always eventually fights it within himself. It's his character. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really nice. At the, the the part, uh, do you guys watch Dragon Ball Super? No, I haven't oh, had a sorry. chance. But it's really interesting with Broly and uh, everything. Okay, I don't want to spoil it, so I'll wait till you guys watch it and then we'll, <laughs> don't we'll talk spoil about Dragon Balls. It. Let's talk about your fantasies, Sharif. What what fantasies mm -hmm. do you guys have? Well, what, uh, what do you mean fantasy? What what type of fantasy? You said yeah, fantasies also. of the future. <laughs> That's what you said. What? Since what? Oh, like when I was fantasies. talking about you know, okay. you might build like images for the future. Exactly. Oh, I have fantasies, man. That when I shake a man's hand, uh, it's I. I never feel like the weaker man. I want to be the strongest. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> what the fuck? Did not, <laughs> did not see that coming at all, bro. No? Uh, yes, exactly. Drink some water. You want so, an yeah, honest I, answer? I, I'll give you an honest answer. Okay. No, fair enough. But like, say <laughs> I shake your hand now. Like, what do you feel? <laughs> and why do you feel like something when you <laughs> shake men? <laughs> yes. Do you actually genuinely? Yeah, it's it's like because a part of it said I've been, been bullied a lot in my life, man. It's always made to feel like the weaker guy. So it's one of the, something I've always. It's the reason I play like the, the, the champions I play in league. I actually a counselor made this clear to me. Uh, I told this to Said actually two months ago. Um, it's like the psychology of the type of characters we enjoy playing as, or the okay. Before you, before you continue, before you continue, I'm gonna ask you one question. I only, I exclusively play female characters in MMOs. What does that mean? <laughs> it, no, 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 no. It doesn't. It's always like that, though. That's the thing. It's not always but, like that. <laughs> yeah, you're you're competitive in your games. You like you have like yeah, the skills. That's true. Yeah, you know, yeah. You see so it as a game very well. That's about the psychology of the characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's like yeah. It's like when you when you want to play, uh, psycho like studies show that when uh, you relate to the character you're identifying as and playing as, enjoyment levels are the highest. 
That's mm. why, like, I often always, for me, I exclusively play tanky characters. Like, you know this in the, mm. in the game we played for years, League. Tanky. I always want to be like the front tanky, like the bulky, tanky. strong, front line, mm -hmm. overwhelming, mm. unstoppable, like, you know. <laughs> Malphite, you know, Sion, yeah, exactly. Darius. Yeah. Especially the ones that can also give a beating. Like, I yes, yeah. the Mishbas syndrome. They can, like, tank a lot of damage. I feel like you also like bruisers. Which I like exactly, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never ever ever <laughs> chosen off my own accord a champion or any character in anything where there's a selection screen that's like small and like, <laughs> like <Bro. nimble. laughs> my favorite character in like uh, Guild Wars 2 is Asura. I play Asura, yeah, those little guys, yeah, I tiny, also, tiny yeah. ass fuck, and I have him as short as possible. <laughs> I can't, man, yeah. It, the smoke just go since the first character I made was a Norn, man. Like, <laughs> love know. Norns though. My, I have another, like, I have a Norn. Uh, but I think for me, in terms of gaming, I get what you mean by relating to the character. And I think that's because gaming is a bit of an art. And in general, like if you look at, uh, uh, there are some studies, psychotherapy studies about how, you know, art therapy, you guys must have heard of it. I have. And so, and so the best way for people to relate to, uh, like to get the positives from art, which is like emotional processing and uh, dealing with trauma or dealing with feelings of shame, guilt, and fear. The best way to deal with that is to be able to understand the art. So if you put, give them, present them with the best art, relate, the most relatable to person Y about feeling you know, shame or guilt, but it's not relatable to person X, person X will have like zero connection with it. They won't get any of those benefits. So I think in gaming, I feel that a lot as well. And that's why uh, some games I feel like are so good, but I can't get immersed because I just feel nothing for the character. <laughs> Like, exactly. who is this guy? You know, I think my son, I'll give you an example like Just Cause. I feel <laughs> Rico Rodriguez. Re <laughs> yeah, it's like one of the most popular games out there. But whenever I play the game, I just feel like I'm an idiot. Like, I can't play this. <laughs> it's just like for like low IQ, just like <laughs> <laughs> shoot and break everything. You know, it's yeah. I can't relate to that you know, desire of like just wanting to break everything. Uh, even like when I do it, like, say I play GTA, at last, like. Five minutes and then i'm back you gotta get on that quest grind man i want to know yeah. what's happening <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You have to screw it out for too much time yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. know uh i love action movies though i feel like action movies are always really fun to watch but they always have stories yeah. though man yeah. there's always like a plot mm, there's always a struggle a conflict the character is in, and in like some game. action movies have like some horrible stories as well like i hate those like fucking what fast and furious bull <laughs> can't watch that i like <laughs> I've been, and ironically, I've been to the cinema to try and watch uh, Fast and Furious with my friends like maybe three, four times and legitimately would fall asleep. Miss That's four out of nine times, man, <laughs> by the way. There's nine movies. Would... You went four times. <laughs> <laughs> and I would still fall asleep, like at least for 30 minutes. Hey, that's right. I napped through the cinema because like, I can't, I'm not interested in the story. It's like we already know The Rock is going to I mean, to be like... fair, the cinema, is, the cinema is the best place to nap. Because that's true. It's soft, it's dark and cold. Yeah. I don't know why that's they make true. it to that new class. Yeah, it's so comfortable. In the movie yeah. theater! <laughs> why do you think people aren't going back to the movie theater? Just... Oh, bro. Marra, I was watching Ghost, uh, Ghost in the Shell. Is it? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yes. So the the, the oh, anime. Right? Part of Johnson. Oh, anime yeah. <laughs> I was watching that one, and we went like really late. It was like 11 p.m. And I don't usually like go that late to the cinema because I know if I go that late, it's, it's bound to like I'm bound to sleep, you know. But it was a good movie. I was anyway, looking forward so to it. Yeah. My yeah. bro, I wake I wake up because the guy next to me is laughing because I was snoring. <laughs> <laughs> and bro, funniest thing ever, the people that went to watch uh, uh, Ghost in the Shell were all bikers, man. It's like biker gangs coming in their leather jackets, just sat there like, watching <laughs> Ghost in That's the so Shell. Funny. Yeah, man, a strange audience. Yeah. <laughs> but like the audience was so strange. I was so confused. It reminded me of like that, uh, you know, the clip, Ali Mora, was it you that shared it? About Joe Rogan, about like his type of fans. <laughs> it's like when I when he when he sees biker people, they oh. yell like. <laughs> I don't I don't know what this is. That's his people. Uh, wait, oh wait, I'll, sh I'll share a screen. Like Plaza, I'll show it to you. Yeah. It's ironic that biker gangs are like into anime, man. Like, what is that? It's crazy. It's not the typical like uh, people. Like, oh, like, a specific one too. Like, <laughs> it's like they came as a group to see it. <laughs> Sharif, what is going on where you're at? 
<laughs> Ali, I can't share screen because I don't have I love you. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. No more. All good. Let's go. Okay, look. This is really funny. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, it was a Jordan Peterson podcast. No, no. This is this is Jordan Peterson talking about. <laughs> I right, never mind. It's gonna be never mind. Like, yeah, we can yeah. we can't be doing our podcast watching the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not in his podcast. It was in uh, uh, Jordan Peterson's podcast, and he was talking to Joe Rogan and asking. Oh. He was interviewing Joe Rogan. I he see, was telling him about okay. his fans. It's funny. You, should, you guys should watch. What uh? What are, what's your favorite anime? I'll let Sharif go first because I'm curious. He, you probably know the answer, Amir, because actually Amir is the one who brought me into it. And, you know, honestly, I, I watched it again with my sisters when I came to Canada. And they don't like anime. They're like so against anime. They're like, it's a cartoon, but they loved it. Loved it. What is it? I always tell it to people as well. It's called Death Note. Hmm. Yeah. Why do you love Death it so much? Death Note is amazing. It's basically, it's, exactly, man. It's such a, it's thrilling, it's suspenseful. It's so mentally like, uh, immersive it's like you need to be smart to be able to get like to predict the plot and everything um, you can't you pretty much can't the, the you can't yeah like, but like you, off, you can kind of like you're always in a state of suspense you don't know what is gonna happen mm. uh it's basically a teenage uh, high school kid with strong moral ideas he has a strong ethical compass very very idealistic he receives a notebook from the heavens falls in front of a school <laughs> one day <laughs> wow holy shit <laughs> <laughs> Man, show, prove it, prove it works. Write Ali's name, man. No! Yeah, let's, let's try it out. Right? No! It has the rules and everything. Look, it's so cute. <laughs> oh my god, okay. If this. Holy... <laughs> wow, you have an actual. Wow. Yeah. wow. Unfortunately, this... you can't see the Shinigami right behind you because you haven't touched yeah, it. Yeah, that's only you can. That's cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to touch it first, yeah. Hey, if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'm going to write my name in the Death Notebook. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, self promotion at the cost of your life. <laughs> at the cost of your life. I remember threatening Ayad to write his name, and he got really like upset. He, he was like, "No, bro, you don't can't. Please don't do that." I remember. <laughs> yeah, he was so into it at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sh <laughs> Sh Sharif, what's the worst addiction for you? Anime or gaming? Just we talked about both. Oh, gaming, gaming, for sure, yeah. gaming. All when, my life. Is gaming. When were you? All your life? When were you the most? I mean, all my life, it was gaming more than anime. Yeah. When when was like you had the hardest moments in gaming? Like, what was the most you've ever spent in gaming? It has to be 2016, 2017 when I was when I the first year I did half a freshman year in two different universities because I dropped out in both because of like anxiety and like just not knowing what I'm doing. Uh, LAU and LIU. Well, this was in Beirut, of course. Uh, I was spending like all literally like 95 percent of my time outside of class. Which I was skipping anyway to go to play more games. I was only skipping class to play games. All my free time outside the class schedule was all gaming. Like I would spend eleven hours, twelve hours in a net cafe playing, uh, playing League. This was mm -hmm. season six and seven, 2016, 2017. And then I would go home, sleep, wake up, go to my two or three hours of class, max four hours, but I probably skipped the fourth hour of class to go back to playing League. So yeah, that was really toxic for me. At those well, you know what's like uh, curious to me about addiction? Um, is how we can actually sit and do that thing for 12 hours. Like I'm not addicted. I don't think I'm addicted to a particular game right now. And even the games that I'm enjoying the most, bro, at best, yeah, I mean, if I'm like, and you're so zen and I'm relaxed and I have nothing to do. And, you know, I'm just have free time the whole day. Like I'll play two hours and then, you know, I'm fully drained out. <laughs> Two hours, man. Yeah. You used to marathon, man. You used to marathon with me. Ali, on this. Yeah, I used to marathon. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and once did a 28 hour consecutive gaming marathon of League of Legends. 29. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, uh, and the sad thing is we didn't make progress. <laughs> we, we did that for me. I did it to fix my sleep. I me too. Like that's that. my experience. Yeah, we did the uh, sleeping uh, reset, <laughs> the sleep cycle yeah. reset. And, it was fun. It was fun. Like, to be fair, it was like, for me, I don't know. I had like, what, that was the summer. I didn't have much to do. Still a bad yeah. idea to, to, to do it because, you know, 
Um, there's are, there are better ways to fix your sleep than to, to stay yeah, just, for yeah, 28 yeah. hours playing video games. Brute force it, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, dealing dealing with a gaming addiction is strange. Uh, I don't Would know you if say I say that we were never addicted to a game, man. Like, I, I believe I was like many times in my life. Look, I I was addicted, but not I don't think to the same extent you were. Uh, I think it impacted me differently. Not necessarily like, but it had a bad impact on my life. For me, it brought up a lot of my anger. Well, anger was in me def- by default, you know, uh, I, and which is why I got into meditation and I got into yoga and all that. The whole purpose was to get rid of that anger, right? Like the uh, Hulk, man. The Hulk, <laughs> I don't know you must contain the anger. <laughs> yeah. And and league, yeah, and he kind of like made that angle like <laughs> exp- exponential, right? Because you go in and everyone's like fucking degenerate mentally ill yeah, <laughs> in the game, <laughs> trying to like you you miss a minion and the guy's swearing at your like ancestors and wishing you death <laughs> by like by fire at a stake. Or may your mom watch you burn and tell you that she's not proud of you. You know <laughs> that that kind of level, you know, <laughs> but. <laughs> insane for you get really angry if especially if you're like somehow moved by whatever the random person is saying so for me that was the main issue but when i had to like study i studied uh, obviously not perfectly but i didn't let it yeah i didn't let everything fall apart i kind of just managed to (laughs) juggle some things though it could have fallen apart so easily and if had i not had like i don't know that one ounce of reasonability i guess within me i don't know what to call it but there was some part of me that was still sane in that period and that was the thing that kind of kept me going and then after that obviously, yeah, you were still conscious of everything yeah there was a small part that f- kind of wanted to not let everything fall apart let a lot of things fall apart but kind of kept going somehow. without going into details man uh, personal details what do you mean like generally like, were you yeah any um i t- i because and I always talk about like the same sphere of things because that's all we have in life, right? So you only have like what your career, your relationships, your friendships, your um, your body health, Danny, and your mental health. And in that sense, I think everything took a hit. Uh, education took a hit in terms of like I could have done better. I still did fairly well, especially in during my times of like. Uh, I think that's the domain that didn't take the biggest hit. Like educationally, I still kept my head straight, kind of, but I didn't see friends as much. You should be proud of yourself, man. Half the guys, honestly, I think you're too hard on yourself. Half the guys in our high school graduating class were going into engineering. Only two graduated. Not even, even you, only you, only. I think no, nobody else graduated. No, I'm, I'm sure there are a few that degree. did the engineering, and I don't know exactly who, but I'm, I'm not hard on myself. Like, I'm just, be, I'm just being honest. Like, can you? I know I had this potential to do more, you know, and I re- recognized that I didn't do more because I was focused on something else. Now, obviously, like there's a systematic and there's systematic issues that result in addiction in the first place. Don't think you get addicted just because you're prone to addiction. Well, in some ca- people's cases, yes, that's you know, some people are predisposed to uh, to being addicted to their behaviors, especially to like alcoholism and drug use few people that are just genetically it's like stay away from those things if you do it you're, you're gonna have a hard time quitting i don't think that was the case for me i think for me i had a problem making masana you know friends because it was a new country i wasn't used to it. i had the problem you know uh, maintaining interest in uni because the classes were so big i didn't feel like i was in a conversation with the professor so i wasn't too interested in studying i had the problem when uh, with relationships because I didn't feel like I cared about getting in a relationship but I felt at the same time that I was in pressure under pressure that I should be in one because that's what everyone should be doing and that's what everyone is doing um, in terms of my health I'll get to that but in terms of my health uh, it also started to fall apart a little bit uh, because I wasn't taking care of it. I wasn't, yeah, I didn't know about meditation and yoga then. Like I kind of knew, but it was that thing that you make fun of people for doing. <laughs> it wasn't the thing that you do, right? <laughs> That's how you un- how I understood it in Lebanon. It's like, yeah, this is for like the Lebanese stoners. Uh, it wasn't, a, wasn't something that you do. <laughs> 
right? And and so that start like my health, especially in terms of exercise. And I still think that was there was like systematic yeah, issues there, <laughs> because I had I was a lot healthier than I was when I went to uni, and then I lost motivation because it was very hard, and I didn't want to come. I couldn't come to terms with the fact that. I lost progress because because I broke my hand and like other things in my life happened. And I just didn't, I hated that I lost progress and I didn't want to like go near it. I didn't want to like have to start from square one again. That's annoying. You know, it's difficult. You don't want to do it. And, and so th- those are all like things that I didn't want to confront. I didn't want to think about. And I just neglected. And one way to neglect things is to dive into something that's addicting, like League of Legends, like gaming, like um, whatever it may be. You know, there are many addictions that you could get lost into. But the reason you get lost into it is because you want to forget yourself. You want to forget about the problems you're having. You want to forget about your conflicts. It's escapism, man. Yeah. Yeah. You could enjoy things in life. Uh, You could enjoy the same things, but without being addicted to it. So it's not necessarily if you game, you are addicted, you know. Um, In terms of relationships, no, I I didn't get into many relationships, no. but I think that the main thing that was annoying is that I felt like I needed to. You get what I mean? Felt like I needed to be in a relationship. Mishbaz had that to go out on a date or whatever. Like, no, I felt like I needed someone to hang out with and see and go out on multiple dates with and things like that, which wasn't true. You know, it, it's just a stupid idea that people have when they first go to college or university. They feel like they need to be dating, they need to meet someone, and, you know, that it's like it's more fun that way. You know, but that wasn't true. Uh, you just meet people when you meet them, right? Like, especially when it comes to a relationship, you meet the right person kind of chaotically. You don't, you can't really plan for it, you know? Yeah. As much as people want to. And yeah, as you can't escape it. As much as you try to escape, it always comes back to bite you. <laughs> yeah. Um, pretty much. I've never had an experience being addicted to gaming. So I want to know, Sharif, when, when you, for example, was, were at, your worst point, being addicted to games. Um, did you wish like your friends just left you or did you wish someone came and interfered? Um, or were you too deep in the games to know any better if someone came to talk to you about it? I wish my someone interfered, yeah. Mm-hmm. How would how would you think someone could interfere? Like, let's say- I mean, just notice I'm spending too much time on this. Um, you know, I, I think I think in general at that age, 19 and 20, when I, when I was lost in university, and obviously my family couldn't afford it as well, mm-hmm. so it was also a waste of time like that. I was also like full of anxiety the whole time. Social anxiety was like I didn't have any friends there, so it was always a miserable experience going to campus because there would be all these groups, and I'd just be walking there looking, feeling like an alien. That's like uh, I wish someone just asked me like, "What are you doing with your life?" You know, like I'm spending 60% of my day. And I eventually had surgery, man. I eventually, eventually developed something that like only like 8% of people mm-hmm. ever develop and only 2% of people need surgery for something like that. I developed a cyst, a uh, pilonidal cyst. I had the surgery when I was 20 because I was sitting for like two years almost every day, like 20 hours a day, 22, you know? Uh, I needed surgery. That's when I realized like, okay, no, I need to get a job. I need to get moving. University is not working. I can't stay doing this. So that's when I went to sushi. That's when I started looking for sushi ko and everything. Mm. But yeah, um, I wish someone interfered and just asked me what you're doing with your life and just pointed out to me. Sometimes at that mm. age, at least for me, I wasn't as conscious as I should have been of what I was doing with my day to day life. As much. Well, as no one, now. no one can drive the change for you. You have to do it for yourself. But just the pointing and making you aware. That's the thing. It's like people will make you aware. Uh, because has to. and once you're aware, it's like you either confront it or try to escape part of it. And I've seen that happen too. Like not for me, but I've seen some of my friends that were addicted to some things. And if you try and confront them about it, they become more aggressive towards you. They don't want to talk to you anymore. And they just want to sink more into whatever they were doing. So yeah, and I, again, like the most difficult thing is to just be aware of like what's happening. Um, but still, I think the right circle around you is super important because you'll do, you'll, you'll end up conceding, man. you'll end up conceding. If there's people around you and they're bugging you about like stopping whatever you're, you're doing, but it's just no one, yeah, 
everyone's dealing with their own baggage, right? Like yes. it's hard to yeah. to get yourself to commit this much to to helping someone, right? Like it's hard. But I, it's it like the sum of your friends nagging will eventually <laughs> make it different. Make it tall, yeah. Maybe. You could see to the pressure, whatever it is, negative yeah. or positive. Yeah. Encouragement is a very powerful tool. Like if, if me and you and Ali start going to the gym together, it's going to be easier to sustain than going on our own, especially if there's the if you develop that atmosphere of like encouraging each other for making progress. Um, you know, you see people sometimes try and do things together, but they really don't know how to like keep the team uh, spirit going. You know, they don't highlight any what's good and what's bad or Oh, I like that you did this. I like that, you did that. Those are little things, but they're really strong. They're very powerful. Women are way better at doing that than men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way better. <laughs> yeah. But it has it makes a huge difference. And yeah, that's why you know when you're addicted. One of the best practices you can do is when you're about to go do your addiction, or like whatever it is, is that to not say that you're any. You know, well, first of all, you don't have to acknowledge. You know, it's a bad thing. Like, don't say it's necessarily a bad thing. But the main thing you need to do is just to be entirely aware of it. Like, can you sit and not lose your mind while you're going through that addiction? And just, you know, focus. I'm playing, you know, this game. I'm still playing it. Just be self-conscious. Like, in a, in a kind of annoying way, I realize it's not comfortable. No one wants to be self-conscious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you want to forget yourself a little bit, but... Um, but once you do that and you watch what you're doing and you watch how you talk and you watch how you're playing and you watch it all, it will, you'll come to recognize like, that what the fuck am I doing? You know, like what I'm doing is unreasonable. And always the moment I ask myself that question when I'm like binging on Netflix or playing a game too much time, it feels like I, like I, like you said, I, I want to escape even harder. I just want to like, Mm -hmm. I start, I'm more likely when I ask myself a question sometimes, just spend more time doing it. Thing is, Yanni, everything we feel and experience, it's not like the symptom of one thing, right? So you have this addiction, but it's also like because of so many other factors. And all those other factors, they go. This is why I'm, Yanni, I'm not a fan of self help, even though like I talk a lot about things that people can do, but I talk in a sort of critical way. I like to point at things and I like to question them and I like for people to question them themselves because. Every individual experience is so different. So the best thing Sharif can do, for example, is just to try and sit and see what the fuck happens when he just sits, right? Like, what kind of thoughts do you get? Where does your attention go to? Where does it come back to? When you're playing, are you like play, thinking about the game or are you thinking about something else? When, you, when you're sad, when you're working, when you're with your partner, what is your like natural state of being? Is it anxious? Is it calm? Is it agitated? Is it motivated? Is it angry? All those things, they vary from person to person. And so it always comes down to the individual to figure out how to deal with their addiction. But everyone can deal with it. I'm, I feel like this is the one thing that is certain is that everyone can deal with it just because the transformative experience in the individual is so powerful. That's I think that's the one thing that makes, makes us certain that we're not our minds almost because 10 years ago, I thought in a completely different way. Yes. And now I think in an entirely different way. It's almost, yeah, I mean, it's hard to deny that I'm not the mind because it's changing, it's doing something else. And so once you feel that, and oh, whatever I'm associating with is not necessarily a part of who I am, and you can observe it kind of see what's happening on just so you can understand it and through understanding you can go through transformative experiences and it's it's really there you go so meditate yeah. that'll help you try to fix yeah. one habit have one habit at a time i'm very into the behavioral sciences i'm very into into like yeah, habit forming. so whenever i see something like something like i'm starting to develop a bad habit i make sure to cut it <laughs> before I, it goes to ramping that's how i've been trying to keep that's how i kind of keep myself under control and then i try to build habits that sustain me i get addicted to things that are good for me like this podcast or lifting <laughs> or whatever it is um it's good man yeah man uh, ali about you actually what have you been addicted to don't mind asking in the past that's negatively impacted your life um if addiction honestly if your first addiction always has a negative connotation 
Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, you're addicted to good things. You know, a lot of people are actually addicted to things that actually benefit their lives and their well-being. But like, I think even negative. that needs you need to like navigate that relationship too. You need to understand it. Like, not just because it's good for you doesn't mean you should be doing it all the time and 24/7. That's the only thing you should be thinking about, right? Yani, the way I, the, the analogy I give, it's like everything in your life is you can treat it like a plant, right? You don't need to walk. overwater everything and you have to like pay attention how much does this actually need and don't that's neglect that. it completely either well, that's, that's yeah cool. because i know at the end of the day you're trying to bro you're trying to understand your experience better you're not just trying to progress through society and climb the ladder you're also trying to grow and transform as a human being that's a very important objective Just why, why are you trying to grow though? You're not trying to grow. You're growing anyway. <laughs> you're just trying to kind of make sure you're growing upwards. <laughs> no, the, the, the reason you grow, I, I think I like Jordan Peterson's uh, descriptions because you, once you understand yourself better, you can aim at what's higher. You can aim at what's more meaningful. And so you try and, and understand yourself So you can aim at what's higher. So you can at least experience life in a much more meaningful way because whatever's more meaningful is going to you know it's going to reflect in your own life, right? But that's also, you know, an individual's answer, an individual's experience. You know, I when 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 I when you ask me like why do I need to grow because I feel like when I sit and I'm static and I'm not trying to understand myself I suffer that's the main reason right the alternative is suffering to me and so I choose the other alternative which is to try and understand myself which is to try and grow because the alternative is suffering and if I had to choose between suffering twice as much because I still have to suffer loss and disease and illness and whatever still have to lo- suffer all those things and to suffer also on top of it my in- inability to understand my own psychology and my own physiology i don't want to go through the twice the suffering right i'd rather go through one only so that's the main for me right. that's the main thing you either face the pain of discipline or the pain of regret <laughs> which one are you going to face <laughs> pretty much <laughs> As well. You make a yeah. good personal trainer someday, man. If you keep getting swollen, I, mean. <laughs> I would. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, so, Sharif, yeah. you said you're addicted. So, what was you said? You had the wake up call because you know you had that surgery. Things were falling apart. But what made you consistent? And were you consistent even with the quitting? Or did you have like relapses? Or... No, actually, I wasn't consistent with the quitting. I just had to be at my job. I couldn't have a choice. Okay. I actually kept doing the same thing. I just did less of it. And I spent more time working and making money and saving mm. for Canada. So, but by, guys, I get fired just by necessity. I had authority to please you. You know, I couldn't just skip mm. work. You know, uh, yeah. And it just took up a bigger part of my day. Because actually, mm. as soon as I, I stopped Sushiko, I spent three months in Lebanon still before going back to Sushiko for a month, and then one, and then just to Canada. Uh, those three months. was the time we did the 29 hour marathon that was those three months after Chico I went back to doing the same thing at least though I had like a direction and like I was going to Canada but still mm. yeah I never actually stopped I was just forced yeah to so the life. priority imposed itself on you exactly. so how about now do you feel like you have a choice in terms of your priorities or are they also just imposing themselves and you're just in the passenger seat again No, now it's just a job. Uh, it's the same thing, but I have more, much more freedom than before. You know? And I work less, much less hours. So it's not the priority. It's just a job. Like the priority the job takes in someone's life. Like no matter like what your mental state is, you're always going to drag your ass back to your work. Like every single day. You need to make money. Your boss is going to be unhappy. You can't just not go when you want. You have to pay the bills. Mm. So in a sense, I'm still... Uh, my question to you, I, I didn't phrase that, I guess, correctly, but... My question to you is, when you think about going to work, are you like, what genuinely, right? Like without um, thinking about it too much, what drives you to go? Is it the fact that you're going to let someone down? Is it the fact that you need the money or you can't pay rent if you don't? Or is it because work is fulfilling, work is meaningful, serving people those 
you know, I'm helping in the, run this restaurant. I'm making good progress. I'm learning about the, running the business. I could potentially use that to do this, this, and that. Which one is it that is driving me you more or is it like an equal thing even? They're both, I think, both an equal measure, uh, definitely. But maybe the first one more is just that I would probably mm-hmm. prefer to work less. You know? I think if I, I think if I had like someone just put three thousand dollars in my bank account every month, I probably would quit my job mm. and just, you know, probably. What would you do job. instead? I'd probably sink into my bad habits, but then I. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah, but uh, thinking, okay. I, it would be a wake-up call very soon, though. I, I wouldn't. But, I, I but wouldn't don't you it. think if someone is like putting three thousand dollars in your bank account and now you're working and you're already making like what four thousand, three thousand dollars a month, yeah. then you're make then you're making like six thousand dollars now, and that could help you do something much more meaningful. Yeah, like I said, the, the first thing, the, the, the main reason, I mean, both of them are equal measure, but the, an equal measure, uh, consistent factors. But the first one is maybe slightly bigger. That there's that I don't want to let someone down, my boss, people I work with, they're like family. Mm-hmm. Uh, my family, of course, I don't. Want, if I don't have a job, I'm obviously wasting my life. You know, so I'm not saving for university, I'm not doing anything. So, and it's the, the one that's just like, you know, I need to pay bills. So if I can pay bills without working, and probably still save money to do for university and all of that. So, yeah, I'd, I'd probably prefer to stay home or just do other things. You said you said you think if you aren't working this job, you're wasting your life. I mean, yeah, the only thing meaning, of meaning I do every day is my job, man, and my like housework. Like, if that counts, you know, I have I, I, I maintain a clean house environment. If you I'm don't have, to... <laughs> think of it this way: if you don't clean your house, it's gonna fall apart, and that's a negative to everyone in your neighborhood <laughs> and to the landowner. So by cleaning your house, you're doing a positive for sure. It like, is a contribution. You know. Yeah, like I, at least I'm doing two parts of adulthood well in my job and my just household chores. I maintain a healthy house and a clean environment. Hmm. But yeah, other do you question that, it though? Do you, like, because yeah. for me, the I question what I'm doing a lot, you know, is this the most meaningful thing I could be doing? Is this the most meaningful thing I could be doing? And I think to the point of, yeah, the unreasonable, you know, it's an unreasonable point. And I think that's also because of my anxious demeanor in general, you know. Me too. Uh, I, th- I think that transformed as well. Like, I don't want to just throw things out there without explaining. Plus, I dealt with my anger, had a period where I knew what I was working on. I was planning on something. And that kind of fell, for, fell apart because of COVID. A lot of situations had to change for me. And so now, uh, anxiety kind of took over, I would say, as my neutral state. If I'm neutral, I'm anxious. <laughs> right? And I don't consider it a bad thing. A lot of people would consider it a bad thing. Yeah, but of course, yeah, when, I, when it first started, I hated it. What the hell is this? You know? And I was trying to like understand it a lot to uh, at some point yeah, you're trying to fix it. And then one, two things I realized, one, you can't fix it uh, in terms of like, it fixes itself. You can you get me? You fix the situation outwardly, you fix the, some of the things that you're holding on to psychologically. But even then it fixes itself. You, if you put too much time into it and that becomes a problem itself, you know, the whole thing of how do I fix this? How do I get rid of it? That also becomes an issue. And so I think because of my anxious demeanor, when, when there is a topic such as what is the most meaningful thing I could be doing, I tend to go over it frequently and think about it in numerous ways. Though I don't think it's the right thing to do because, well, first of all, I think it's unintelligent to think about the same thing multiple times <laughs> in reaching the same conclusion, right? And so when I notice it... I, well, I think it's a sign of intelligence that you, you constantly... I don't accept many like a conclusion. You constantly go around it because you're aware of the many ways it can be flawed. There are many like you have a healthy. No, but I, what I meant was in you know, a sense of uncertainty what that. You what I meant was I have this thing I'm doing, and I'm like, is this the most meaningful thing I'm doing? No, it's not, and I stop there. Perhaps you know, and to just have to be stuck in a repetitive pattern plot, I think is not intelligent. No, but say I'm thinking about the most meaningful thing to do. But I'm now approaching it from different perspectives and I'm talking to people about it and they're sharing their perspective and there's a there's an observing of what's happening around me and through that you know a new realization of what's meaningful comes 
That's different. I would consider that intelligent. That's, I'm talking about anxiously repeating the same ideas in your head because that's how you feel. You know, that's completely different. And so, one of the ways I deal with this is meditation. You know, because meditation it's kind of like you can't escape. So, ah, that's the main thing. You sit, and then anxiety is going to attack you with everything it's got. You know, big guns, small guns, <laughs> all kinds of anxiety is going to attack you. You're going to feel like you have to stand up. You have to open your eyes. You have to go do something. But it's, it's it comes down to you know one key thing you said earlier, which is priority. You know, you felt like that. You had to go to your job, and so to me, the priority was right now. The priority is to not let anxiety stop me. For example, so I sit down. Whatever it does, it does. So uh, some, sometimes it gets so bad, like I sweat and, you know, like it gets very intense, uh, physiologically at least. And you start feeling an itch in your stomach. Because when I meditate, I meditate uh, at least 30 minutes, usually like an hour. Uh, I don't like doing it less wow. because less is like, I mean, to me, it feels like less is cheating because my anxiety doesn't start to build up until then. <laughs> it doesn't start to build up until like, 30 minutes to an hour. So if I do less, I feel like I'm cheating. And because it's the priority is to understand it and not let it stop me, I have to go through that. And then it comes, it feels really uncomfortable. But then throughout the day, say that like normal anxious feeling is there. It's not really stopping me as much because I already went through the, the worst it can throw, right? So now the rest of the day feels a bit like a cruise because even if physiologically I feel a little anxious, it's like I dealt with the worst volume. Yeah. <laughs> True. Cool, and does it not stay with you? Like, does it just disappear after the hour of meditation? Or? No. Some uh, by the end of the hour, many times it's it's at its peak. It's peaking, and usually when it's peaking, I don't stop. Like I could carry over an hour, but usually around the hour mark, any okay, around the forty-five minute mark, it would hit its peak, and then like after that, we'll start dropping, 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 dropping. And then it will still have a certain level because yeah, I mean, you have to understand it's not something that goes away or changes any yeah, I mean, it's a chronic thing right like it could be i don't know if it's gonna last with me for 10 years but i treated it like it was never going away if that makes sense i acknowledged this presence and i said okay this is something that right now is not choosing to go away yeah and i can't force it to go away <laughs> obviously so as far as i'm concerned it's permanent so i'm gonna treat it like it's permanent i'm gonna consider how am i gonna live with this if it were permanent and that's why I any mean, when it slows down it might go away throughout the day a few hours here and there but i would say like throughout the majority of my day i'm feeling more or less anxious and that's a new thing to me it's not like something old i'm i'm one of the i would consider myself to be very composed like as a person I mean, yeah. put me in a random ass situation. I'm composed, I'm calm. I'm, I know how to, I mean, in a social situation, I'm calm. Put me in a job situation, I'm calm. Put me in a lecture, I'm calm. Put me in an argument, I'm generally calm. And so for me to feel a level of anxiety that's intense, like out of nowhere, <laughs> when I'm like 25, fresh, it's like, oh, this is new. <laughs> and so it took, there is a learning curve to this. Yeah. I mean, there are well, other I, things. So would that... you attribute it to the meditation? Or... I wouldn't attribute like anything to one thing, bro. Like, I, I just can't tell. I don't think I have any enough uh, insight to just be able to say, "Oh, this is entirely from meditation." I'm telling you, meditation. The experience that I observe is this: anxiety goes like this, builds up, goes back down. Now I'm here for the rest of the day, right? And what so if it goes it up. Down, because yeah, any it's like what makes it go down? Good question, man. I don't know. I don't know. I think it has to do just. I think it comes in bursts anyway. I think it comes in bursts anyway when it comes. I think it comes like <laughs> panic and then ah, release. You know. So you're saying but the, like a one hour. But, but it's like a white. Yeah, any let's say you know it's anxiety over time, right? Like time is here. I would say like. When you're meditating, it's spread out over that one hour. Whereas when you're when you're going through your day normally, it's more like in the 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 15 minutes here. And it's like very short bursts, you know? 
as when, when you're meditating, if, you're, if your demeanor is anxious. When I used to meditate before, I didn't have to go through this. My experience of meditation was completely different. It was very pleasant. I was very calm. It was very nice to meditate. <laughs> and that's that's also part of the reason why I stopped for a while because it got it got hard. It was difficult. Oh, wow. I wanted, it got was hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was very easy in the beginning because I was calm. I was <laughs> I was chilling, right? Like I was just vibing, like, oh yeah, you know, I'm closing my eyes, I'm resting, kind of. But then once like anxiety kicked in, that's when it became difficult because how do I sit down now? Yeah, how do you sit through it? Yeah. Uh, but it became twice as important. Right? Yeah. That's also I feel like as we grow older, a lot changes, a lot changes. You just have to adapt mm -hmm. to circumstances. How'd you get over your gaming addiction, Sharif? Like now you're not a huge gamer. I didn't actually, I mean, I didn't, no, I didn't. I mean, are you gaming right now? <laughs> Still my primary form of escapism. Um, yeah, I, I don't do it too much though, because I have to spend time with my girlfriend. I still see my sisters a lot. And my housework, so I just, I have to do those. All right, Sharif's cutting out. So have... But the conclusion of this episode is Sharif still has gaming addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Despite after this whole talk. <laughs> Look, if I can give you like one piece of advice, Sharif, is just, um, just pay attention, man. Like, that's it. Like, don't... For, Yanni, from our conversations, I've known you for a long time, and you always come back, Yanni, you That's text me for, for two weeks, and then you come back like seven months later, you're like, sorry, I didn't reply. It's like, bro, I didn't hold it against you anyway. In fact, if anything, like, Bukun, like someone's worried about you, right? Like, it's not, I don't think it, it upsets anyone to know that you're dealing with problems and you have something to do that's keeping you busy. No one takes that personal, right? Uh, but I know... I know that when you have something difficult, you go away from things, you know, like, I have to kind of hide it. Like there's a layer of shame, but man, just be comfortable talking about it more, at least with yourself, you know? maybe not with people. Uh, it helped a lot for me, Masala, to be able to talk about, oh, I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that, at least with myself. You know, I don't go into this conversation with too many people. I feel like it backfires a lot. Not many people. Yeah. And when you tell people, oh, you're anxious, you're just like, oh, you know, just don't be anxious. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you, you hear a lot of things like that, you know. Yeah. Relax. Like, oh, or just go do something. Keep busy. Go do a walk. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Go for a walk. 10 minutes every morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This yeah. is another episode of A to the show. Sharif died. <laughs> Sharif is frozen in time. <laughs> I think this is a moment of reflection for Sharif. <laughs> Oof. This has been another episode of A to the show. That's how we say now. Peace. Woo. Okay. Well, what's the intro? Wait, wait, what? This is the intro. <laughs> A to the show. Check it out. Wise Guys episode. Another one. What are we talking about today? Master Ogwe, right? And, Master uh, Ogwe. Master yes, Shifu. Yeah, Kung Fu Panda lore, man. Kung Fu Panda. Man. Kung Fu uh, Panda. Awesome addiction. That, yeah, meditation. meditation. <laughs> addiction. Gay problematic gaming. And I think, yeah, anxiety. Do you think it was anxiety. a great episode? Yes. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs>